there are some monumental efforts occurring on this fire with uh, folks who are really dedicated to trying to protect uh, the values and the communities to the best that they can. Hi, my name is Ken Watkins. I'm the Operations Section Chief for Southwest Team 3. As Operations Section Chief, uh, I work and, and help coordinate the efforts uh, of the firefighters on the ground. A, a lot of our work is, uh, is working with our incident commanders and uh, getting the intent from the agency administrators and translating that to the work that occurs on the, on the fire ground. There's roughly 700 people on the fire line today. The number seems large and it's, that's because it's a, it's a big job. Um, currently, uh, just by a, a map exercise, there's 237 miles of perimeter uh, along the Cameron Peak fire today. Uh, we are attempting to work about 80 miles of that over the next several days as possible. Approximately 160, 180 uh, people, mostly crews, uh, maybe a combination of equipment. Those folks are securing the fire's edge on the eastern, the most eastern side of the fire. Uh, really what they're doing are taking advantage of uh, the weather conditions and the, and the snow and precipitation that we had to go and find areas of heat and secure that heat. Uh, it's a very large area, just the, the most eastern section of the fire. We're talking 12 to 15 miles and it takes a long time to get through there. You know, the crews that are, are working in that environment, uh, they have their packs, they're carrying chainsaws, hand tools, uh, they have, uh, you know, extrication equipment that they're hauling with them as they go, uh, as far as being able to help get folks off. The terrain and the, just the geography of this area is fairly extreme. It's very rough country. Um, as you can see behind me, the, the, it's, it's uh, very difficult to work and uh, it takes time. Yeah, the, the process of hot spotting and cold trailing, as firefighters can now see the edge after the snow has left, uh, they're walking the black edge of the fire and uh, they are usually, they'll have one of their gloves off and they'll be feeling for heat as they go and as they find heat, then they'll start physically working that and then as they find heat in bigger materials, uh, wooden materials, they'll use chainsaws to cut off that heat and either extinguish it or chunk it further into the fires area where it's not going to be able to move and expand the fire perimeter. Right now we have type 1 helicopters which uh, carry a, most of these have a bucket or a snorkel and, uh, and they're picking up water probably five to seven hundred gallons at a shot and as the firefighters work and they get into areas it's, they can't transport water with them so as they as they go they're they're cooling down in front of them and, and helping them to secure heat. So uh, it's a combination of aviation and on the ground uh, resources and that's, that's the only way that we can continue to work and uh, capture the fire's edge. Uh, the fire's edge is important. We're trying to secure it to uh, limit its potential and stop it from moving, from, that, from expanding further. When the fire's edge is uh, further in the black, if, if you see black all around it and, and trees that have already burned, um, a lot of those areas that are interior, they don't have a lot of potential to uh, contribute to fire spread. Um, as we work the edge, we're trying to secure those edges. We're actively trying to secure that edge to be able to stop um, fire from spreading. Why it's important to remember, in my opinion, is that this fire is burning on the ground right now, but when it really is active and moving, it's moving in those heavy fuels and it's moving rapidly and it's getting into the treetops and it's moving by spotting. Um, especially when we get into components of dead lodgepole and fir and spruce, those types of fuel, they, they spread by spotting. So we're securing that fire's edge as we can, as, as far in as we can uh, to, keep, you know, you know, to keep that from going because that's the condition that we're in right now. Um, as we continue to dry out, the potential is there that uh, the areas that uh, either we can't get to or places that are green still in the f inside the fire, they can start burning again. And if they uh, have enough room to move, they can start spotting and spot across those lines. Uh, Highway 14 corridor off the Poudre River. Um, this is interior of the fire. The fire's edge is, is, is in most cases fairly uh, far from here. Uh, but as the fire continues to burn and it, as we dry out, uh, smokes pop up and there's still areas inside here to burn. 
Um, a great majority of our engines right now are engaged around the values, uh, infrastructure, residents, businesses. Uh, it's a, it's, there's a lot of them in here. It's a very big job. And they have a whole system of um, tanks that ha hold water and in some cases pumps and hose and then the engines are, are going back and forth in between those and as we get those areas are really trying to secure around those values. And like in the Red Feather Lakes areas and some of the communities that are still adjacent or a little farther out from the fire, the potential is still there that as this dries out, for one, the land mass is so large and the terrain so uh, uh, difficult, but there's still a very high potential that this fire can move. It may not be today, uh, it may be into the future. So those communities and, and uh, places that are outside where, there, where um, we see or hear people working, what those are doing, that's a lot more heavy machinery, um, dozers, skidders, feller bunchers, and they are trying to put in lines that if the fire does get there, uh, we have a, a, a potential to, to impact, you know, positive, positive effect there to, to protect those communities. Uh, the engines and the fo other folks that are in there, they're, they're, still, they're still scouting out areas, they're still identifying residents and what the best methods are to be able to uh, protect us should the fire get there. And it's a really tough job and, and, and at times it's uh, very difficult to win in, in these conditions uh, with uh, you know, historic weather conditions and, uh, and, and fire behavior in the terrain. Um, I, you know, I, you know, from my perspective and my perspective only, I, I would just say that there, are, that there are a lot of people who are going to bed tired every night uh, doing their utmost to, to do the best that they can um, to help on this fire.